Hymn 210 is our opening hymn. Good to see you all in God's house on this very cold winter's evening. And we want to thank you all for making the effort in coming out to the meeting tonight. We're going to open our service by singing this lovely hymn, The Love That Jesus Had For Me To Suffer On The Cruel Tree That I A Ransom Soul Might Be Is More Than Tongue Can Tell. Let's think of the words as we stand to sing this lovely hymn. Let's all bow in prayer, seek the face of the Lord tonight, pray that the Lord will come and meet with us this evening. Our Father in heaven, we thank Thee again for another gospel service, and we praise Thee for this lovely hymn that we have been singing and the subject of the hymn. We praise Thee for the love of God to sinners, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. We thank Thee that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. And we thank Thee that the Savior came, was born in Bethlehem's manger, because He wanted to save souls. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. We pray tonight for those in our service, those listening on, who are still strangers to grace and to God, that even this night, that they might realize and recognize the great love that God has for them. 
Oh God, we pray that you would bless every part of this service. We pray that you would bless our brother Sam as he sings and as the word of God goes forth. Even, Lord, we thank thee for the community singing before this service started. How these old hymns of Zion warm our hearts. Those of us who are saved, we thank thee that we have the song of the soul set free. What a blessing it is to be born again of the Spirit of God and redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh God, we pray tonight for a real sense of your presence. We pray, Lord, that you would defeat the devil, bind the strong man in Jesus' name. We thank thee that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And Lord, we pray tonight for many who can't be with us because of sickness, because of the weather. We pray, Lord, tonight that you would come and meet with them. Bless them, Lord. Richly we pray thee. And, O oh God, may each and every one of us, as we sit in God's house or listen on to the service, may we have a real sense of your presence this evening as the Word of God goes forth in song and in word. So come and bless us now. We just thank thee, Lord, this evening for all thy mercy to us. Thank thee for the health and strength that you've blessed us with when many others are laid aside in beds of sickness. Yet, Lord, we are here tonight in our full health and strength we thank Thee for that, and we pray, Lord, that we'll truly worship Thee this evening in spirit and in truth. So come and be with us now in this service, for it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. We're delighted tonight to have our brother Sam Houston with us, and Sam is no stranger, I'm sure, to any of us, and we want to give him a very warm welcome, and he's coming to bring us just one message in song just now. Thank you, Sam. Before I sing, friends, may I just thank our dear brother for the invitation to come and sing for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven at the end of life's journey, whether be long or short. Thank God I'm delighted about that. Praise the Lord. And uh, thank the Lord for our brother who's uh, going to play to accompany me in this first song. It's simply entitled, Love Found a way. Wonderful love that rescued me, sunk deep in sin, guilty and vile as I could be. No hope within When every ray of light had fled O oh, glorious day Raising my soul from out to the dead Love found a way Love found a way my soul love found a way that could make me whole love sends my lord to a cross of shame love found a way oh praise his holy name love brought my savior here to die on calvary for such a sinful wretch as i how can it be love bridged the gulf twixt me and heaven taught me to pray i am set free forgiven to love found a way sing it if you know it love found a way my soul love found a way 
that could make me whole. Love sent my Lord to a cross of shame. Love found a way. Oh, praise his holy name. Love opened wide the gates of light to heaven's domain, where in eternal power and might Jesus shall reign. Love lifted me from depths of woe to endless day. There was no help in earth below. Love found a way. Sing it. Love found a way my soul love found a way that could make me whole love sent my Lord to a cross of shame love found a way Oh, praise his holy name. Amen. May the Lord bless that lovely hymn to all of our hearts. And Sam, you're singing as well as ever. And may the Lord bless you as you continue to serve the Lord in this way. It is good to see you all in the meeting tonight. We welcome you in the Savior's precious name. And those that are joining us online, we welcome you as well. And we do pray again the night that the Lord will come and meet with us. Just a few announcements. I want to make them at this part of our service. Remember that immediately after this service tonight, we are remembering the Lord's death in His appointed way. Do this in remembrance of me, the Lord said before He left this scene of time. So if you're saved and love the Lord, please remember uh, the Lord's table immediately after the service this evening. Tuesday night, the prayer meeting at 8 o'clock, and I'll be here, God willing, to take the prayer meeting on Tuesday evening. Then on Friday night at 7 p.m., the children's meeting and the children's meeting plus Christmas party for the primary school children only. So do remember that special party on Friday night. Young people, and again, we want to thank all of those who came on Friday night past to the carol service in Tondraghee. We really enjoyed that time of fellowship, and it was great to see so many gathered out. Youth fellowship, Christmas dinner, and social on Friday night as well. And young people, just let me remind you again that you're to meet at Brownlow House at a quarter past seven sharp for your party on a Friday evening. Please remember that time. Next Lord's Day, the Sunday school meeting again here in the church to practice for the special carol services next Lord's Day here at 10 a.m. Young people, children, and the Bible class is just at the same time. And the service is then again just at the usual time, 11.30 and 6.30, preceded by the half hour of prayer. In the morning, the children of the Sunday school will be singing and taking part, and I'll be bringing them a children's address on Sunday morning, next Sunday morning, and then next Sunday evening, our Christmas card service with the young people from the Youth Fellowship will be singing, taking part. We're looking forward to the meetings uh, next week, and we do pray that the Lord will bless. And you pray, pray this week that the Lord will come and speak to uh, the hearts of all. Now, next Sunday night, we're having supper for everyone, and we'll have a cup of tea and a piece of shortbread, maybe a mince pie as well. But do remember that and plan to come and stay for uh, something to eat next Sunday night after the service in the evening. Just to remind you again, I'm sure you don't need reminding, but on Christmas Day, Sunday, Christmas Day, 
this year. The services are going to be earlier in the day, in the morning at 10.30, and then in the evening at 6 p.m., and they'll be a little shorter as well in time. But do remember the change of the time, please. There's a Zoom prayer meeting that has been organized by the Government and Morals Committee of our denomination for this Saturday morning from 9.30 in the morning to 11 uh, o'clock. And that is organized to pray for our land and for situation in our land, that the Lord would come and send us a breath of revival. Now, all the details for, for that prayer meeting, joining it are online, but if you need help, then if you see me or any of the elders, they'll be able to, they'll be able to help you. A Sunday school party is on Saturday at the, uh, at the 17th at 3.30 p.m. Uh, parents, please take note of the time. And then, of course, the parents are to come at 5 p.m. for something uh, to eat. So remember the, the Sunday school party this, this Saturday uh, at 3.30 p.m. Now, I think that's all the announcements. We're going to sing another hymn, and the offering is going to be taken up for the Lord's work. It's 263 in the hymn book. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain for me who him to death pursued. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? We'll keep our seats as we sing the first few verses of this hymn, 263.
Now Sam's going to come along and he's going to sing uh, two further messages in song. Thank you, Sam. My friends, before I... <laughs> I just want to say something very special to you folk here. And it's this. I was going along to visit Mrs. Audrey Gateway in St. Francis' home in Portadown. And I hadn't a clue where the place was. <laughs> so I made an inquiry with two ladies, one walking along the road. She got her phone out and she showed me from the phone roughly the dick where it was. And that I thanked her very much and she went away with one of the recordings. And I don't know who it's going to reach, but praise God, she was delighted. And I went and then I got a wee bit closer and I thought, well, I better check again. And here I went over to this dear lady's house and opened the wee gate and sort of knocked the front door and she came to the door and I inquired and she said, it's just behind you. So that was handy enough. And then as I was going to shut the wee gate, she says, she shouts after me, are you saved? She says, I am saved, all right. Praise <laughs> the Lord. And she says, I go to the Tandergy Free Church. <laughs> Did you, I tell you that? No. No, well, there you are. So I trust, sister, you're here tonight, and if you are, don't go home without saying hello to me, if you wouldn't mind, because I'm, uh, that was a wonderful time. And went into the St. Francis home, and praise the Lord, the receptionist took a couple of the recordings, and they're going to play them in the home. What do you think of that? That's the Lord's doing. Isn't that right? That's God's doing. So I want you to be encouraged, and uh, thank the Lord for that. Right, okay, brother. I hadn't intended to say anything, but then it just come to me there now, and I thought maybe well worth sharing it with you. All right. If this song, first song's called The Birthday of Jesus, Amen. Jesus Christ, Son of God, King of all the earth, how we love to praise thy name and celebrate thy birth. Jesus Christ, Son of God, King of all the earth, how we love to praise thy name and celebrate thy birth. Born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, he came one lonely night to all his love to show, predicted long before the King of Kings to be. This tiny babe is the one who reigns eternally. Jesus Christ, Son of God, King of all the earth, how we love to praise thy name and celebrate thy birth. Jesus Christ, Son of God, King of all the earth, how we love to praise thy name and celebrate thy birth. Shepherds on the hill, expecting nothing new. A night of watching sheep, the stars above in view. When angels lit the sky with news of Jesus' birth, they went to town to see the babe who's worthy of our praise. Sing it. Jesus Christ, Son of God, King of all the earth. How we love to praise thy name and celebrate thy birth. Jesus Christ, Son of God, King of all the earth. How we love to praise thy name and celebrate thy birth. Wise men from the east travel from their land to see the little boy whose stars had seemed so grand. They carried precious gifts, they gave them to the boy, and went back home to tell their friends of never-ending joy. Jesus Christ, Son of God, King of all the earth, how we love to praise thy name and celebrate thy birth. Jesus Christ, Son of God, King of all the earth, how we love to praise thy name and celebrate thy birth. The bells are ringing still to tell
tell of Jesus' birth. The choirs are singing out to give him all he's worth. And yet the world goes on, not knowing him who cares to give eternal life to all who call upon his name. Sing it! Jesus Christ, Son of God, King of all the earth, how we love to praise thy name and celebrate thy birth. Jesus Christ, Son of God, King of all the earth, how we love to sing thy praise and celebrate thy birth. No remarks from me here. Just looking for a drink of water there, bro. The wells run dry, but the matter I will play on regardless. All right, brother. Sorry for interrupting you there. I'm just one of these abnormal creatures, you know. The lovely song, The Christ of Heaven. Do you know the Christ of Heaven? Precious babe of lowly birth, gift of love from God the Father, Savior given to all the earth. Do you know the Christ of heaven? Do you know him as your Lord? Can you say to him, my Savior, Worship him as Christ the King. Do you know the Christ of heaven? He is Christ of Calvary. Heavenly guest, despised, rejected, crucified for you and me. Have you room for him? Oh, listen, do not bid him to depart. Take him now to be your Savior, Christ the Savior in your heart. When you know the Christ of heaven, Joy of joys to you belong, peace which passeth understanding, wondrous new redemption song, life eternal, your possession, precious promise now of God. When you know him as your Savior, Christ the Savior as your Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord again bless those lovely hymns to all of our hearts. I know that we, a few weeks ago, got a few of Sam's uh, tapes, and they're all gone, but he has a few with him tonight. If anyone else would like one of those tapes, then you can see him after the meeting. Uh, this evening, we want to thank him for coming along tonight and singing for us uh, in the gospel. Let's all turn to the, word of, to the Word of God. We're going to turn to Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, this evening, a very familiar passage of Scripture. And perhaps with this passage of Scripture open before us, we could all bow just in a wee word of prayer and ask the Lord for His help as we come to consider God's truth this evening. Let us all bow in a wee word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank Thee and we praise Thee tonight for all Thy mercy and goodness to us. We thank Thee, Lord, for the lovely hymns that we have heard sung tonight. And Lord, we pray this evening as we turn now to the sacred word that You would come, Lord, and fill us afresh with Your gracious Holy Spirit. We pray especially, Lord, for those in our meeting who are still strangers to grace and to God. We pray, Lord, that You would speak to their hearts. But Lord, encourage your own people. Oh God, we thank thee for the message of the gospel, and we thank thee for that day in our own lives. When we first heard 
about Jesus the mighty to save. And O oh God, we thank Thee that You worked in our hearts, convicted us of our sin, and drew us right through to Christ. And we pray this evening, Lord, that there might be a drawing to Christ, and we pray, Lord, that You'll do it for Your own great name's sake and for Your own glory. For us in Jesus' precious, precious name we ask it. Amen. Very simply, at the end of our gospel service tonight, I want to draw your attention to three different reactions to the incarnation of Christ. The incarnation of Christ was announced, of course, by the angel as an event of great joy to the world. You needn't turn to it, but in Luke 2, verse 10, we read, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. However, although Christ's birth was an event that brought great joy to this world for many, there were many who received this news with anything but joy. The truth is, when the Savior was born into this world, there were different reactions to the announcement of His birth. And they were not all favorable reactions to this wonderful news. Now, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, which is a very, very familiar passage of Scripture, I'm sure, to us all this evening, we have three different reactions to the incarnation of Christ. We have the reaction of King Herod. We have the reaction of the chief priests and the scribes. And then we have the reaction of the wise men. Very simply tonight, I want to draw your attention at the end of this gospel service to these three different reactions to the news that the Savior has been born and has come into this world. And I pray tonight, especially if you're in the meeting and you're not See, if you're not a Christian, that the Lord will take His Word and write it upon your heart. My friend, let me ask you a question. How do you react to the gospel? How do you react to the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus? Do you react negatively, or do you react positively? I pray tonight that as this message goes forth and you hear the message of the gospel once again, that you might react positively and come and put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your own and personal Savior. Because as we say from this pulpit week in and week out, your greatest need is to be born again of the Spirit of God. And of course, as we've been finding out over these past weeks, that's the reason why the Lord Jesus came into this world. He came into this world to seek and to save those who were lost. And you and I were lost, lost in sin and lost and bound for a Christless eternity. But thank God the Lord Jesus in coming into this world has provided eternal salvation for each and every one of us. And of course, that's what the Bible says. The Bible invitation is this, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And our prayer for you tonight is that you will come and react positively to the gospel and come and trust the Lord Jesus as your Savior. First of all, I want you to notice the reaction of King Herod. King Herod's reaction to the birth of Christ was that he was very annoyed. Indeed, when he heard about the birth of the Savior, the Bible says that he was troubled. In other words, the Bible tells us that Herod was disturbed. Look at verse 1 and 2 and 3 of Matthew chapter 2. These familiar words. Now, the birth of Jesus. Now, when the, Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod, now here's his reaction. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Herod's annoyance soon turned into hatred. And when you study this passage of Scripture that is so well known 
to most of us. That's what you find, because he eventually sought to kill Christ by having all the children from two years old and under murdered in Bethlehem and in the surrounding area. But why was King Herod so annoyed? Why was he so disturbed? Why was he so angry after hearing about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, Herod felt threatened. When he heard from the wise men that a new king was born, a king of the Jews, fear gripped Herod's heart, for in Herod's mind, he now had a rival. And King Herod feared that this new king would take his place. King Herod did not want to give up his throne. And that's why he was annoyed. And that's why he was angry when he heard about the birth and the incarnation of the Son of God. You see, before Christ can reign as king in the life of any sinner, the sinner must first turn away from sin. Men and women, many today, when they hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, they get very annoyed. And the reason why they get annoyed is because sin reigns in their hearts, and the sinner does not want to give up their sin. Oh, I wonder, is there someone in the meeting tonight and every time you hear the gospel, you get annoyed. Now, you may not show it openly and outwardly, but in your heart and in your soul, you do get annoyed because you want to hold on to your sin. You want sin to reign in your life. You want to hold on to the pleasures of sin. Oh, my friend, if that's the case, I pray this evening that God the Holy Spirit will take a dealing with your heart and with your soul. You see, the Bible speaks about repentance unto life. And this world does not like the doctrine of repentance unto life. But my friend, before you can have Christ reigning in your life, you must repent of your sin. There can be no salvation without repentance. And of course, repentance simply means turning away from sin, doing an about turn. And instead of sin reigning in your life, Christ needs to reign in your life. But Christ will never reign in your life until you turn from sin and, of course, accept Him into your heart as your own and personal Savior. Oh, I pray this evening that you'll not be annoyed at the gospel, that you'll not hate the gospel, but that even this evening you will turn and seek the Lord and trust Him as your own and personal Savior. Herod was annoyed, and that annoyance turned to hatred because he recognized that in Christ, as far as he believed, that Christ had come to dethrone him. Oh, my friend, I pray tonight that the Lord will so speak to your heart, and instead of reacting negatively to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you will come and seek the Lord and find eternal salvation through the blood of the Lamb. What about the reaction of the chief priests and the scribes to the incarnation? Well, the reaction of the chief priests and scribes was that of apathy. They knew that the Old Testament had prophesied the birth of the Messiah. The chief priests and the scribes, of course, were the religious leaders at the time of Christ's birth. And if anyone should have welcomed the incarnation, if anyone should have welcomed Christ's birth, it should have been these chief priests and scribes, the religious leaders of the day. But the chief priests and scribes, who were well informed, informed concerning the coming of Christ into the world, they just ignored the incarnation. As soon as Herod asked them concerning this newborn king, they, they could open their Bibles and turn to the relevant prophecies. Look at Matthew chapter 2, verses 4 to 6, and consider what these religious leaders did and said, and more importantly, what they knew. Look at verse 4. And when Herod had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. 
This Old Testament prophecy, of course, is found in Micah 5, verse 2. And the chief priests and scribes could tell King Herod immediately where this prophecy was found. Why? Because they were familiar with this prophecy. They were familiar with the fact that a Messiah was going to be born, and they knew where this was going to take place. Oh, one would have thought at this point that the chief priests and scribes would have been excited and wanted to go with the wise men to seek out Christ the King. But they were apathetic to this news. And although they possessed much truth concerning the Savior's birth, they ignored that truth because of their apathy. Oh, how sad. How sad. The reaction of many, of course, today to the birth of Christ and to the gospel of salvation is complete indifference. They just simply ignore the truth. And although many have a knowledge of the truth, they go on in their sin rejecting the Savior. I wonder, is that you tonight? You've been brought up in the gospel, perhaps brought up even in a Christian home, but certainly you've been sent along to a gospel-preaching church and every week you hear the message of the gospel and you're just indifferent. You're apathetic. You've really no concern at all for Christ and what He has done upon the cross for sinners. And as far as you're concerned, you want nothing to do with the gospel of the Lord Jesus, the Savior. Oh, my friend, I pray that will not be the case. I pray tonight that God the Holy Spirit again will take a dealing with your heart and with your soul and reveal unto you your great need of God's eternal salvation, God's eternal redemption. You know, the Bible tells us now is the accepted time, now is the day of salvation. He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed and not without remedy. Because there is wrath, beware, lest he take thee away with a stroke, then a great ransom cannot deliver thee. You see, a knowledge of the truth will not save your soul and prepare you for heaven. And as far as the chief priests and the scribes, the religious leaders at the time of Christ's birth were concerned, they had much knowledge as far as the Old Testament Scriptures were concerned. And even as we have pointed out already, when Herod wanted to know where this Christ would be born, where this Messiah would be born, they could immediately turn to the Old Testament Scriptures and reveal that knowledge to the king. But they themselves were not excited about the coming of the Messiah at all. They were not interested. Is that your reaction to the message of the gospel tonight? You're just not interested. Oh, my friend, my prayer is, as I have said, and I've emphasized that God the Holy Spirit will so work in your heart this evening that the Lord will create an interest within your soul tonight because the Lord needs to work in your heart because salvation is of the Lord. And I pray this evening that you will realize that you are the sinner needing a Savior, that you will realize and recognize tonight that the Lord Jesus came into this world because you and I need to be saved from our sins and the consequences of our sins. How sad when the gospel goes forth and men and women react indifferently to it, apathetically to it, and instead of embracing the Christ of God and coming and trusting the Lord Jesus as their own and personal Savior, they ignore the wonderful and glorious message of saving grace. You know, there's no greater message than the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there's no greater message to declare than that Christ Jesus came into this world to save you and I. And on that cross, He has provided eternal salvation for us. My, what a message! What a glorious message that you and I, we don't need to die on our sins and perish in hell forever. We don't need to be lost 
for all eternity because God has provided salvation for each and every one of us. Oh, my friend, would you not grasp that message tonight? Would you not believe it? Would you not accept it? Would you not turn from your sin and trust the Savior? Don't go out of God's house another Sunday evening saying no to God's free offer of salvation. I pray that your attitude and your reaction to the message of the gospel will will change tonight. And instead of being indifferent, instead of wanting nothing to do with God's Son and God's salvation and God's heaven, that even this night that you will turn and seek the Lord and find eternal redemption through the blood of the Lamb. Or oh, the reaction of Herod, the reaction of the chief priests and the scribes. And then, of course, we have the reaction of the wise men. Of course, the reaction of the wise men was that of adoration. Take a look at verses 1 and 2 again of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2. It says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we're come to worship him. Underline the last little phrase. And we are come to worship him. Notice a number of things here about the wise men. Notice their desire was to find Christ. But how did they find the Savior? Well, we all know how they found the Savior, by following the star. Men and women, the Bible is the star that points us to Christ. As the star led the wise men to where the Savior was, the Bible reveals to sinners the Christ of God. And that's why the Bible is so precious, and that's why we read it every week, and that's why we preach uh, from it every Lord's Day, because the Word of God reveals to us not only our need of salvation, but it reveals to us how we can get to heaven and how we can be sure that we are redeemed and saved for time and for eternity. This Bible that we have before us tonight, it points us to the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. And I pray tonight that the Lord would give you a desire to find Christ as your Savior, to know Him as your Redeemer. But Notice that the wise men sought Christ until they found Him. Until they found Him. They were determined to find the Savior. Nothing was going to stop them from getting to Christ. You know, there are many things that will stop you, seek to stop you from getting to the Savior. There are many obstacles that the old devil would put up to stop and hinder you from coming and putting your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus this evening. But my friend, I pray, I pray that you'll be determined. No matter what the devil throws up in front of you tonight, no matter what lie Satan whispers in your ear this evening, my prayer is that you will be determined to come and find Christ and to know Him as your own and personal Redeemer. The Bible says, But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find Him, if thou shalt seek Him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. There's salvation for you tonight. There's redemption for you tonight. There's everlasting life for you tonight. And praise God, you may have come into the meeting this evening on the broad road to a lost eternity, but you can leave the meeting tonight knowing that you're on your way to heaven and home. But in order for that to happen, you've got to seek the Lord while He may be found and call upon Him while He is near. And of course, the Bible tells us, for as many as received Him, to them give He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Would you not seek Him tonight? Just like the wise men seeking out Christ, would you not seek the Lord this evening? You know, when they found Christ, the wise men, they received Him as Savior and Lord of their lives because the Bible says that they worshipped Him. 
The wise men had come to worship Christ. And when they eventually found the Savior, of course, we know that they presented him with gifts. But look what it says in verses 9, 10, and 11 of Matthew chapter 2. Look what it says. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They found the Savior, and they worshipped him. The reason why they worshipped him was because he was and is the Son of God. You see, they knew who the baby Jesus was. They knew that he was the Son of God. The Lord had revealed this wonderful truth to them. Oh, my friend, do you realize who the Lord Jesus is tonight? He's the Son of God. He's the second person in the Holy Trinity. And someday, if you reject Him and go out into eternity and meet Him unsaved, He will be your judge for all eternity. For the Father has committed all judgment unto His Son. But today, tonight, as you're gathered in God's house, He wants to be your Savior. And thank God, as the Son of God, He is the Savior of the world. And if you seek Him tonight, and you find Him as, and trust in Him as your own and personal Redeemer, then you will leave God's house this evening knowing that your sins are forgiven and having the assurance of eternal salvation. Sinner, the Lord Jesus tonight wants to be your Savior, and He wants to be your Lord. I wonder, at the close of the meeting tonight, will you seek Him and find Him and receive Him as your own and personal Savior. What is your reaction to the incarnation of Christ? What is your reaction to the message of the gospel? What is your reaction to the death and the resurrection of the Son of God? What is your reaction to what the Bible declares concerning the Lord Jesus, the wonderful Savior that came into this world just over 2,000 years ago. Are you annoyed when you hear the gospel? Does the gospel make you angry? Maybe not outwardly, but in, in your heart. And maybe even tonight as you sit in the gospel meeting, all you want to do is for this meeting to be over, to go home away from this service this evening. Does hearing the gospel, is it indifferent to you? Do you not care? Is it, are you apathetic to the Word of God? In other words, do you just not care? Or are you like the wise men? Do you welcome the message of the wonderful gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Oh, I pray tonight that you will not react negatively but tonight that you will react positively. Because the one who was born in the manger, the one who died upon the cross, the one who rose again, wants to give you everlasting life. Would you come tonight and worship Him and accept Him as your Savior? Oh, I pray that you will. And I'll pray that you'll come just now and that you'll come just as you are. Because my friend... That's how you must come, just as you are, just as the sinner, confessing and repenting your sin to him. And thank God if you do, the Bible tells us if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But don't reject the gospel for another moment. Seek the Lord tonight. And thank God you'll go home and you'll go home rejoicing. And you'll go home knowing that you have a home in heaven. The greatest blessing, the greatest blessing in this world is to know that heaven is your home, that your sins are forgiven, and that you're 
saved by the blood of the Lamb. But friend, you'll never know that unless, like the wise men, you will seek him until you find him. And when you've found him, you'll worship him. And I'll tell you that night they went away rejoicing. They went away rejoicing, knowing that they had met the Savior of the world. May God bless these few thoughts to all of our hearts. Let's buy in a wee word of prayer. Maybe there's someone in the meeting tonight and the Lord has been speaking to your heart. You know, it's not by might nor by power, it's by my Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And the Lord tonight has been with us and I believe the Lord has been speaking to hearts. Oh, my friend, don't leave the meeting tonight without having the knowledge of God's salvation, without having the knowledge of sins forgiven. If you'd like to speak to us, if you'd like to speak to our brother Sam or myself or somebody else in the meeting, some other Christian, you wait behind and speak to them. But remember, this salvation is real, but it's only real to those who seek and find Christ as their Savior. May you seek and find the Lord tonight as your own and personal Redeemer. Father in heaven, we thank Thee and we praise Thee for Your presence in the meeting tonight. And we do pray, Lord, for those here, those listening on, who are still strangers to grace and to God. And Lord, they've heard, they've heard the message of the gospel so many times. They've heard about the birth of Christ. They've heard about the life that He lived, the death that He died. They have heard about how He has risen again. They have heard about how He will come back again to this earth someday. Yet, Lord, they're still not saved. They're still not saved. Oh, God, I pray that you'll take the anger away and take the apathy away and take the indifference away from their hearts, Lord. And, oh, God, may they this night be wise. For we know that wise men still seek Jesus and still find Him and accept Him as their Lord and as their Savior. Wise men still worship Him. Oh God, may there be a worshiping of Christ tonight in the hearts of sinners when they turn away from their sin and trust Thee as their own and personal Redeemer. Bless us now. Remember, Lord, those who have to leave, we pray that you'll bring them to their homes in safety. Those of us who will remain around the Lord's table, we pray again, Lord, that you'll continue to present yourself with us in a very special way. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Folks, I'll not go to the door tonight, but those who have to leave, you're free to leave. God bless you and safe home. Thank you.